bringing the people behind our food to life. The truffle's like no other food that I know of. This is the classic Oregon truffle forest. Douglas fir, between uh, 15 and 30 years old. Paradise. Truffles are just like Pinot Noir. They like a view. They like a great beneficial climate. Happy people with appreciative palates. That's going to be truffle hunting the movie. There will be mud. Now for the high tech part. The truffle vesicle. I've seen charts that indicate that the epicenter of North American white truffles is actually in the northern Willamette Valley, which is where we are, which is a great happenstance for me because I can go hunting truffles nearby. Truffles grow on the roots of Douglas fir, which are very shallow, and that's the other reason you can, uh, you can rake for truffles. In Europe, they grow under hardwoods. They're under much, much denser, harder soil. The truffle is actually a mushroom which figured out a way to grow and yet not have nearly as much spore dispersal as a full-grown mushroom, simply because it stayed underground. These are a few spots where I dug the last few weeks. I found some there, but what you look for are little telltale signs where animals have been digging. They're really the only food that depends on an animal consuming it in order for the species to survive. That's the reason truffles throw out this amazingly complex grouping of gases to attract animals to themselves so that the animals will then spread the spores. You can paint your own picture for yourself on exactly how that happens. See this? But that makes them unique. That hole. Yep. Squirrel beat me to it again. I like to tell people that uh, sometimes you're out there for 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, you're not finding anything. And then you find this little tiny truffle about like that. Well, that's about a five minute truffle because it shoots just enough endorphin into your brain to keep you going for another five minutes. There's one right there. See it? It's, a, it's approaching full ripeness. May not be blowing an awful lot of gas, but it's gonna be blowing gas pretty soon and that'll make it uh, just right for producing oil. But then every once in a while you get a white truffle about like that. That's a two hour truffle. And that shoots enough endorphins into your brain so that you can go for another two hours. But the reward of finding it just kind of keeps you going. When you find one, you want to find another we'll find one. some more in here, I think. Mounds from previous years. Oh, there's one. And then when you want to find one of a certain size, you want to get an even bigger one. There's a certain amount of aesthetics involved as well. <sighs> Fishermen, for instance, uh, they'll brag about the size of their fish. A truffle hunter will brag about the size of his truffle. Yep. So it kind of keeps you going. It's sort of this little game you play with yourself. I know it gets boring for a camera person, but I get excited every time I see one. I get that adrenaline going. I'm totally into the experience of digging truffles and bringing them out and finding the real nice ones. I've stopped trying to solve problems when I'm out in the woods digging truffles, which a lot of people would look at as pretty much of a uh, of a mindless exercise. And you know what? That'd be totally right. But that's the beauty of it. It's sort of a Zen sort of thing in a lot of ways where you just kind of let your mind go. You're concentrating on one thing. You're smelling the dirt. You're listening to the birds. You're listening to a pissed off squirrel every once in a while who's uh, looking at the truffle that he was going to have for supper. There's one I missed. And uh, you're just totally enjoying, uh, enjoying nature. There is an abundance of these truffles in this area. It always amazed me that nobody ever really bothered to capture their essence, you know, and their oil until I started researching and understand why it was so difficult. And that's when I began my own personal research on producing an Oregon truffle oil. This is without doubt the most labor intensive food producing system in the United States, harvesting the truffles. And then it takes anywhere from two to four weeks to cure the truffles. The oil over a 20 day period is infused with the truffles. And then the truffle oil has to be aged for four to five months before it's ready to go. It takes four to six months to produce the soil from the time that the uh, truffles are harvested. The most important thing that you need to uh, consider is how the character of the truffle, how those gases are going to get into the oil and under what conditions. 
We're still in the process of perfecting it, but we're a lot farther along than we were four years ago when we began, well, when we began producing it. And we're all set to go. What I like about the Oregon truffles is whether or not I'm shaving it on a dish or making a truffle oil, all of those gases that constitute the character of that truffle are in there. And the great thing about it is to expose somebody to an Oregon truffle through the truffle oil or the truffles themselves and have them say, God, I had no idea. Nobody told me about this before. Oregon truffles aren't supposed to be this good. And that's what I spent the last 15 years doing is unveiling some of those mysteries. As you can see, it can take an awfully long time to get a sufficient amount of truffles to make oil. You know, let's move down the hill and back towards the house. I'm going to kind of look and poke as I go. They tend to be fairly scattered. Yet some days are better than others. No question about that one. Fact of the matter is, though, truffles contain upwards of 50 different volatile organic compounds, what we call VOCs. So the com combination of all of those compounds makes the olfactory reception to a truffle oil something far more complex than what we've ever experienced.